Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide, and this video we will be finishing off section 2 of test number 3, so let's uh, take off from number 18 where we stop. So, any two points determine a line. If there are six points in a plane, no three of which lie on the same line, how many lines are determined by pairs of these six points? So, um... So I've drawn these six points, and even though it said no three on a line, we could have just drawn it like so. It would have still worked. However, I just decided to really make sure I follow the rules, so it's like this. So let's name these points now, shall we? So let's call that A, B, C, X, Y, Z. So let's start from point A. How many lines can we make on from point A? There's line AZ, there's line AB, there's line AC, there's line AX, and there's line AY. So that's five points. Now let's go to point B. How many lines can you make from here? Not including line AB because we already made that because we need to figure out how many total lines there are. So. We already know AB is a line. We don't need to include that into calculations, but there's line BC, there's line BX, and there's line BY, there's line BZ. So that's four lines. On point C, you can you already have two lines made, which is line BC and line AC. So you you don't need to include those. There is CX there's CY and there's CZ. So hopefully you're getting the pattern by now. Point X is already connected to, to three other points. So there's only X, Y, and XZ. So that's plus two. And from point Y, it's already connected to four other points and it can only connect to point Z for another extra line. So the total number of lines is five plus four plus three plus two plus one, which is 15. And that is choice A. I believe I I have a foreboding that I did that wrong. However, okay, I don't know why I felt like that, but it, it's correct. Okay, so now we're going to move on to number 19. Uh, that was an awkward pause. Uh, over here, bright yellow. Okay, so a certain function f has the property that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y for all values of x and y. Which of the following statements must be true when a is equal to b? So what are the statements? Not just statements, all the equations. Okay, so f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. And that uh, is for all values of x and y. So what if we plugged in x and a and b instead of x and y? So a is equal to b in this case. So f of a plus b, let's write down statements here, is equal to f of a plus f of b. So before I even look at the answer choices, let's start writing this one single equation in many separate ways. So so let's look first. So a is equal to b. So we can substitute a for b in this equation to make f of a plus a, a is equal to f of a plus f of b. So f of 2a will be equal to f of a plus f of b. Similarly, we can uh, switch it the other way around, and it can be f of 2b is equal to f of a plus f of b. Okay. And let's look at another property. How about if we change the second, let's start plugging in a for b in the second part of the equation, the right side. So f of a plus b will be equal to f of a plus f of a. I'm kind of running out of space here. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this a little bit to the right. F of A plus F of A. So F of A plus B will be equal to 2F of A. And the same goes for if you plugged in B instead of A. So F of A plus B is also equal to 2F of B. Now F of 2A is going to be equal to 2F of A or equal to 2F of B. So you get the pattern here. F of 2A is equal to 2F of B. F of 2B is equal to 2FA. And F of 2B is equal to 2F of B. So that's almost all the equation, all the different ways you can write the single equation. So now it asks which of the following must be true. So this is why I wrote out ev almost every single equation, just so because they're gonna state this now, which ones are correct. So um, let's scroll down a bit now. We're running out of space here. That's actually number 19. Let's actually add it, add another one there. So let's scroll down a bit. Number I, Roman 1, says F of A plus B is equal to 2FA. Now, in our calculations, is that up here? Well, yes. It's all the way over here. And therefore, that is correct. We got that one correct. And I, number 2, so... The, the way I got all of these separate equations is just distributing and well, writing in separate ways. So it's not any equation solving, it's just right, simplifying, if you must say. Uh, either the left side simplified or the right side simplified. So number two is f of a plus b is equal to um, f of a whole squared. Now, we only worked with multiplying by 2 or adding together, but we don't know anything about squaring because squaring is a whole different thing. The only way this would work is under the condition that a and b equal to 2. However, the question asks which ones must be true, not which ones can be true. Therefore, number 2 is false. If it said which ones may be true, then that would have been a correct answer because A and B E could equal to 2. So choice 3 is F of A. Actually, no, I did that wrong. Uh, there we go. F of B plus F of B is equal to F of 2A. And this is correct because even though I didn't write it there yet, I believe, but this is still correct by the reasoning that since A is equal to B and B is equal to A, F of B plus F of B is going to be equal to F of 2B. F of 2B is equal to F of 2A, which is completely true because A is equal to B, so 2A is also equal to 2B. So that must be correct. So the answer choice that includes 1 and 3 only is choice C, and that is your correct answer. And we'll now do the final question of the entire section, number 20. And uh, there's lots of drawings here. So I'll actually move my book to the side where I can look at what's going on. Okay, this is the beach. And goes up like this. Goes over here down here, divided into three separate sections. Okay, this, this length is y, and this length is x. So, okay, so at the beach, a rectangular swimming area with dimensions x and y meters and a total area of 4,000 square meters is, show, is 
marked off on three sides with rope as shown above and bounded on the fourth side by the beach. Additionally, each rope is used to divide the area into three smaller rectangular sections. In terms of why, what is the total length in meters of the rope that is needed both to bound the three sides of the area and to divide it into sections? So, we need to find the length of the lines that I have marked with a green dash. This isn't signifying that they're equal, but this is saying that those are the measures we need to look for. So, this total area of this square is 4,000 meters, meters squared, square meters. Okay, so now what we need to do here is we should pick values for x and y. So let's say um, x is equal to maybe 10. And actually, let's use a different color there. Let's use the green that we were using. x is equal to 10. And therefore, y is equal to 400. So if x is equal to 10, these also equal to 10 because they are the same length. This is a rectangle. And those go down perpendicularly to the beach. And we don't really have to know it's perpendicular. We just have to know that it's a rectangle. So those are also 10, 10, 10, 10. So the total length in meters of all the rope required is 400 plus 10 times 4. So 400 plus 40, which is 440. So now we need to look at the answer choices and figure out which one holds true. Which one, when you plug in the y value or the x value, well, actually, it looks like you only have to plug in the y value, so we're just going to work with the y value. So which one makes the answer choice equal to 440? So let's start with uh, choice C. So that choice C says y plus 16,000 16, 16, over 3y. Kind of a tongue twister for some reason. Uh, so y is equal to 400. 3 times y is equal to 1,200. Am I doing that? Of course, yeah, I'm doing that right. So, y plus 16,000 over 1,200. You can cross off two sets of zeros. 160 uh, divided by 12, which we'll do right here, um, is 1, 12, 4, 0. Uh, what is this? Oh no, brain fart. Uh, three. 36 and nada. So, actually, not nada. That's actually a remainder of four. So, this answer doesn't work. Actually, okay, yeah. 13 plus 400 is not 440. 13 point whatever it is. It's actually less. So, we we'll, let's go to choice D and check that one out, which is 3y plus 8,000 over. 3y. So we already know what 3y is. It's 1200. So we'll just plug those in. 1200 plus 8000 over 1200. We can cross off two sets of zeros here. 80 divided by 12 should be 6 point something. Yes, indeed, it is. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm feeling I did something wrong. Uh, 12, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. No, I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I, I always have those four boatings. So, 1,200 plus 6 is not anywhere close to that. So, we're actually gaining. So, now let's go a bit back. And let's go to choice B, which is Y plus 16,000 over Y. So, Y is 400 in our version of it. So we'll plug that in. 400 plus 16,000 divided by 400. And we can cross off two sets of zeros as usual. And 160 divided by 4. Well, 16 divided by 4 is 4. Add another zero and that's equal to 40. So 400 plus 40 is 440. 
and that is the correct answer to this problem as that is the total length required and this will work with any two sets of numbers you pick even if you pick uh, y equals 10 and x equals 400 also even though that is very unlikely however figures are not drawn to scale anyways but even if you were to do that it would still be equal to 440 this answer choice b because they are fixed combinations they have to be a certain combination for it to meet the certain area in the problem so we are done with this section and next math section will be section number five so we will move on to that in the next video and i hope this helped you with your math preparation i said that the other way around again today is opposite day all right take care guys i'll see you soon